Okay, hello. We've got some people sitting in the chat already. Welcome. Hello. Hi, the Hammy channel. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hi, Mario. Okay, so today we have our cat eye workshop. You're going to be experiencing the same kind of thing um, that I offer on Club Puffin, on Patreon and on my website as well. So this is the kind of thing that we do once a month. We just draw draw something little together, spend a, spend a little time hanging out, that kind of thing. Hello, hi Holly. Yeah, um, so hopefully all of you have downloaded the line art got the materials and the reference photo for this if you want to join in I have started a little early so anybody that is joining now um, you can kind of roughly sketch out the line art if you want to and join along if not then um, it's not over Gerda no <laughs> it's live right now um, yeah, if you don't want to draw along and you want to follow along at your own pace in the replay, it's going to be available afterwards, of course. Hello to all those watching on the replay. Hi Alison, hi Alice. So the reference photo for this is my own cat, it's Whisper, it's his eye, so you're free to use it. And I've selected the materials, they're all polychromous pencils. I do have a white pencil which I've suggested for blending if you like to use a white pencil when blending. I've got the Holbein Soft White, this one. I don't know if this is going to focus on the pencil. Kind of. <laughs> it's the Holbein Soft White anyway. Um, I've also got a soft fluffy brush. Mine is in the form of this watercolour brush. I've got my Swordfish Icon pencil sharpener. Um, embossing tool, erasers, all of that kind of stuff and in case you're wondering what paper I'm using it's the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper. Whatever you decide to use in the way of materials, paper, anything, it really doesn't matter. We're going to be going through some of the techniques and everything to draw cat's eyes. Let me know if the music is too loud in the background or if it's just right for you guys. Yes, ooh, Holbein. Only one Holbein, not not using the whole lot. Hi Dawn. Yes, you can get Holbein open stock. Jackson's have some. I'm not sure what the situation is with their stock. Like with the Brexit and everything here. They might not be able to get hold of them as easily as they did before. But on Jackson's Art Supplies website, you can actually buy them open stock, so. Perfect. You have polychromous. Nice. Lovely. If you don't have any of the colours that I've suggested on my material list either, I have a free colour swatch PDF that you can download on my website and then you can substitute some colours from other sets that you may have. One tough cookie. I'm in Holland, Netherlands. Nice. How is it there? I hope everyone's doing well anyway. We'll be starting in a minute. I'm not sure whether we're going to get the whole thing finished. In fact, we probably won't get the whole thing finished. Um, but I'm going to start with the actual iris because I like to do that bit first. And then if we, if we have time or whatever, I'll move on to doing the fur around the outside. If not, then I'm going to release a video next Friday completing it for you guys. So. Very well, thank you, Jasmine. So, hopefully, you guys find this useful. I love eyes, and I hope you guys do too. We've drawn a lot of eyes on the channel, um, but I don't think. Oh no, I've done the leopard eye, which is real time on the channel, but that was one that was done ages ago. So, this is up to date for you guys for drawing eyes on YouTube. Crazy weather last week. Snow. 
Oh, tomorrow 16 degrees. Yeah, supposed to. Someone told me that it was supposed to be really warm here over the weekend, like 16, 17 degrees. I was like, <laughs> we had snow last week. I'll go out and get a suntan over the weekend. Does anybody have any questions before we get started today? That would be helpful if anyone has anything that they want to ask or anything beforehand. You're waiting for the 1st of March to join your Patreon. Good call, because that's the best time to join. What tier was you thinking of joining? What paper do I use? I always use Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper in the 140 pound weights. There's two weights, there's the slimmer, thinner of the two, which is 140 pound, which is the one that I use. The other one's really thick and quite spongy. I don't really like to use that one because it seems to like really absorb the dark colours. Although you can get more layers using that paper. That's cool. So the kingfisher tier. Nice. Okay. So if I'm going too fast at any point, make sure you let me know and I can slow things down or pause and have a little break for you guys to catch up. And if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to ask. I'm going to be looking at the chat and uh, making sure that I answer anything that you guys have. If you're not here to draw and you just want a little catch up, feel free to ask anything as well. Hi from Argentina, hello. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my view. Usually I would um, put the, like, um, put my little face down the bottom, but I know my eyes are gonna play up. So I'm just gonna leave it just so you can see the drawing. So we're just focused on the drawing part. I'm gonna switch that now for you guys. There we go. How many layers? It depends what I'm drawing. If it's something that's uh, like white fur, for instance, then I don't tend to use that many, many layers. But if it's something like black fur or something a lot darker, there tends to be a lot more layers. So it really depends on what I'm drawing. Hi from Japan. Hello. So as you can see, my the scale of my drawing is really small. I think I mentioned it in a materials list that it's going to be three by three inches. If not, it's three by three inches. Um, how do you transfer a drawing to a larger or smaller scale? See, so I use Photoshop um, and get the the canvas size to the size that I want and then apply my reference image to that size so I can like scale it that way. I'm just gonna turn this down a smidge. Okay. I'm also just gonna turn my fan off as well. started early 2 p.m. 2 p.m. I did um, schedule the stream for 2 30 though and I did change it earlier this morning ok 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to get into, I just need to get my pencils, that would help, wouldn't it? I'm also just going to move the microphone a little bit closer, so I apologise if you're getting any kind of interference. Thank you. And hello to Quebec. Oh, and a reference photo. I don't even have a reference photo up. So as I said, I'm using my own cat for this, so you'll all have to thank Whisper for the reference of his beautiful eyes. <laughs> yeah, you only, only missed a couple of minutes, I haven't started drawing or anything yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. How long have I been doing art? Well, I've always been an artistic person, um, but like actual drawing with coloured pencils, not nine years, nine years. We're going to start with the outside of the iris first. So we're going to be using some dark sepia. You want to make sure that there's a really nice sharp point on it as well. And all we're going to do is gently using the side of the pencil and a really light pressure it just go around where we've added the graphite to get the shape of the iris so where you can see the yellow green part of the iris meeting the dark eyelids so that lower lid is where we're adding hi Alice thank you Luciana and hi Amy I'm going to do the same around the top as well, just very gently. So very faint lines and we're also going to add in the pupil as well, so all of the dark areas. So we use a light pressure so that we can erase any mistakes if we make them. It's much easier to erase something that's gone in with a lighter pressure than it is a darker pressure. So if I take my uh, Tombow eraser and just gently try and remove this line, you can see it actually does lift up. So if I've made a mistake in, it doesn't lift up completely obviously, but if I've made a very slight mistake in the roundness or the shape of the eye, I can just gently erase it. It erases much better when you've gone in with light pressure than with the darker pressure, and then I can just readjust the shape. I was just showing you for for a little demo there that you can actually erase a coloured pencil if you've gone in with a light pressure. Darker colours are obviously a lot harder to erase. In this pupil, you want to make sure you go around the highlight. And then we're going to add in the highlight with our white pencil. If you don't have a white pencil, you can just leave it the paper white. So just adding in the shape of the pupil, again using a light pressure. And then we'll take our white pencil and add a white layer. We're going in with, and using quite a hard pressure to get this down. The Holbein White is quite good here because it's really waxy and generally when you use this when you're adding colours over the top they tend to avoid this colour because it's really difficult to add any kind of colour pencil over the top of this soft white thing. So that's why I like to use that one. Good investment if you're looking for a nice opaque white pencil. What would be the problem if you would not erase the graphite lines? So when you're when you've got graphite lines down and you're working with lighter colours, the graphite can really show through. 
and often with darker colours as well if you don't erase the graphite if you've got some really harsh graphite down then that can actually end up being really shiny through your layers of colour pencil and you can see that line With our pupil, we're going to take the dark sepia and use it on its side and make very small circular motions to fill the area of the pupil. Once you're happy with the shape, of course, if you're working out on getting the shape, just take your time, make sure you get that nice oval and then using small circular motions, a little bit more of a back and forth motion as you come to the edges of the pupil so you don't go over the line there. And you can work in several directions as well, so work in one direction, then go over in another. So just using light pressure to add that in. And then once we're happy with the outer edge and everything, we can go in with a little bit of harder pressure on the dark sepia and really like cement that dark outer line in. I'm sorry if my hand gets in the way here, but I'm just using a little bit more pressure. So you can see the difference in the saturation of this dark sepia by increasing the pressure. Same with the pupil, we're going to go around the outside, increase that pressure. And really darken up that pupil by going in with a harder pressure as well. Hi Gemma. So we're going to work on just darkening that pupil because I want to add in a few more colours over there. So we're going to use some dark indigo and some walnut brown. We're going to layer these two on top of one another so we can get a really nice dark colour without actually going in with like a black or any more dark sepia. So I'm just going to sharpen these two pencils up. tape have you used? I've used Scotch Magic Tape. I always use that tape. I don't find that it rips the paper when you lift it up. So we're going to use Dark Indigo first. This is also going to complement really nicely with the blue tones that we've got going in with the highlight as well. So we're just going to use the same technique. I'm just using a light pressure and shading, this time back and forth, rather than using a circular motion like we did with the dark sepia to begin with. Just kind of filling in the tooth of the paper as much as possible. And you can see, hopefully, that it kind of gives it a darker tone, but also a little bit more of a blue tone. We're going to eliminate that blue tone by adding in the walnut brown on top. So I'm just going in a few different directions as well. You can see I'm kind of holding the pencil on the side just to enable for a better shading motion.
and then directly on top we're going to use the walnut brown just increasing the pressure so we can get nice smooth even coverage and a really nice dark tone you can see how nice and dark that is you may have bought some stuff from the scent cupboard what did you buy We burnt the um, double espresso and vanilla flavour um, wax melt. It was quite nice. Although I'm still, I still think my favourite is the sandalwood one that I bought. Ugh, it's delicious. Um, I heard another YouTuber uses painter tape. Yes, yeah, so you can get like that blue painter tape, anything that's kind of low tack you can kind of use make sure you test it out like by sticking it on a scrap piece of paper and then lifting it off and see if you're going to lift any of the the texture or anything off of the paper first but you, you want to make sure that you use an acid free tape we're going to work into the highlights in the eye here. There's a little bit of a highlight as well through the eye. We're going to use a white pencil for that. We're going to be using our dark indigo that we've just been using to do the pupil and also the light ultramarine. If you don't have this colour then any kind of light blue would work well or even uh, you could just use the dark indigo and use a white pencil to really lighten it up. Claire. You've ordered the set of polychromates, yay! You will not regret that. <laughs> You've always used charismas, but needed something with a sharper point for doing fur. Yeah, you do kind of need a really nice sharp point for fur to get those nice details in. Yes, this will be available for replay. I'm going to just leave it up on my YouTube channel like I have done with other live streams, so it's going to be available for anybody that wants to watch afterwards. So we're going to use the lighter blue first. I'm going to use this really lightly over the entire white highlight area here. So I'm just shading back and forth and really gently adding in some blue. You can see where the, the white is kind of flaking off a little bit on this. Can you see those little flecks of white? Hopefully it's focusing on that or picking that up let's get rid of those so it's very very soft soft blue just gonna work it in the other direction with the highlight there's no real direction or anything same with the iris there's no real direction that you have to add your color pencils in it's when we get to the fur that there's going to be direction changes and having to follow a little bit more of like a structure in terms of layering. Thank you, Ben. How's this one coming along? Um, I haven't added any more to it. <laughs> so... We're going to take our dark indigo so you should have a highlight that is ever so slightly shaded blue hopefully you can see the difference in the where it was white and now where it's ever so slightly blue so with a darker blue in my case a dark indigo hopefully you guys have got this one because it's like a proper staple it's a little bit out of focus let me see if i can adjust the focus it might just be the case that the um this well, is a little bit fuzzy on my my paper here. It's just where I haven't sh um, sharpened any of the edges yet. With the dark indigo, I'm going to add in a few of the darker lines that you can see coming into the reference. So a few of those details. It does look a little bit out of focus. I've just refocused the best I can. I have zoomed in this quite far as well because usually I would 
on my camera's lens is um, 55 mil is the largest it can go without adding the big big lens in which case it's a bit heavy and it doesn't autofocus or anything like that it's just a bit of a nightmare that lens I have zoomed in quite a bit on my OBS so it might be that that's causing a little bit of the the out of focusness Um, on the bottom we've got a little bit of detail as well so I'm going to make sure that I use the sharp point of the dark indigo to add that in. It's very very small details. Just going over a couple times just to get the saturation down there. And just going over a little bit with the dark indigo, just shading over the highlight as well, just to make it a little bit more blue. And I'm going to use the dark sepia once again, just to really crisp up the highlight. I'm also going to take a little bit of this dark sepia into the bottom area there, those little details. And just increasing the pressure on the dark sepia and adding that to the pupil. So I'm just trying to get some nice crisp lines. really increasing the pressure now I don't know if that's made it any clearer now that I've kind of firmed up the edges. I don't know whether it's just the the fact that my lines are just a little bit you know not crisp that was making it a little bit blurry because the the highlight still seems a little bit blurry but the pupil seems to have crisped up a little bit there. Don't know. Um eyelash shadows is the eyelash shadow is this top one and the bottom one is actually trees which were which were outside our house he was looking he was in the studio Simon was holding him and we took a photo of his eyes and he's looking outside so you can kind of see the snowy path reflected in his eyes a little bit and uh, did I say on the instructions I don't know I may have done it may have been on the bottom with the paper if not, then I completely forgot, and yeah. <laughs> yes, there is an outline, it's in the, the, the video description. Along with the materials and the reference photo as well. So I'm going to use some of the soft white pencil to add in a little tiny bit of reflection that I can see going on down the bottom of the pupil. This is why I like this white, because it's really opaque and you can get some highlights over the top. If you don't have an opaque white like this, try using a white pencil anyway because you might be surprised that it can actually come out on top. But if you don't, then uh, a white gel pen or taking a craft blade or something like that to, to the darker area will work just as well there. So you kind of see like this pathway covered in snow leading up to the back of our garden where you've got some trees over the back fence and just looking at the reference photo and seeing where there's any kind of patches of white on the eye just adding those in 
think that'll do us for the pupils so we can start adding in some colour to the iris which is the fun part yay um, I'm going to try a pastel on watercolour paper and laminate it ooh laminating interesting how's that going will pastel stick to watercolour paper it should do I've tried some pan pastels on the Fabriano which is very toothless and it kind of sticks A couple of people who've asked me to commissions from the Iowa photographs. Um, where do you go for pictures without copyright issues for reference? I tend to use Pixabay. There, there's if you read the oh the licensing on the bot. Usually uh, f websites like um, Pixabay, Paint My Photo, all of that have like licensing info in the bottom, like in the footer links of the website. Make sure you read the footer links and see if they use a Creative Commons license or a CC0 license. That means generally you can use their photographs without having to give credit and you can sell stuff from it and stuff. But if you, um, I know they're not free, but wildlifereferencephotos.com have some fantastic photos. You can get five photos downloaded from there for $10. Bargain. As soon as you can't see his phone, he turns his head, it's the same. I was trying to get Suki to do her eyes, because she's got some really beautiful eyes. But she just wasn't, she wasn't having any of it, so he's like, Whisper, you're the backup. And he's got some really big eyes, so they were quite easy to photograph. remove the stay free maxi pads <laughs> okay so for the iris we're gonna add in I don't have to use ivory or warm grey one and this is a question that gets asked a lot like what color should you use for your base and it depends on what kind of colors and tones you can see coming through in the darker colors in this case, I think I'm going to go with an ivory because there are a lot warmer tones, there's lots of oranges, um, kind of, I'm going to use some green gold which will pair quite nicely with the ivory, so if you're struggling with your undertones or your base layers, just kind of pick out some colours that you know you're going to be using for your darker colours and then see what kind of lighter colours really sit well, so in this case this is the ivory. We're going to be using some of the dark naples ochre and the green gold here. Also going to be using some bista and raw umber, oranges, that kind of thing, so you can kind of get all of ooh, those pencils out and see if the base colours that you're kind of thinking about using are going to sit well. So you can see that the ivory really sits nicely because it's nice and warm toned with these other colours. The warm grey one does kind of sit nicely but the ivory sits a lot better because it's that warmer tone. So I'm going to go with the ivory in this case. I should draw the key, yes. So with this layer, I'm actually going to sharpen it up because I haven't done that. I did the warm grey one but not the ivory kind of paper. I use Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper. <laughs> Apologise for the noise of the sharpener by the way. Okay so for the iris we're going to put this base down and the technique we're going to use is a circular motion I'm just going to cover the whole area. There is a slight highlight as well. Before before you do that, 
add in a little bit of highlight using your white pencil or an embossing tool or anything that's gonna mark that area and not allow very much to go over the top I'm also gonna just do that bit over there as well you just got the notification that I've gone white oh okay well I did accidentally set it to half past two instead of two so <laughs> that might be why Hi, Stephanie. Is it, recognize the sound of the sharpener. That's when you know that you're like a colored pencil person. Or a pencil person in general. So anybody that's tuning in that hasn't from the beginning, all we've done is just outline the iris very lightly and then got the shape in and then gone over with a harder pressure and we've added in I've done the same with some dark sepia to the pupil then added in some dark indigo and walnut brown and then added in some light ultramarine into the highlight added in the details and that's as far as we got and we've just added in some highlights to the iris as well so there's one bit of highlight here and then there's another little triangle highlight up here as well So we're going to use the ivory and use small circular motions to the whole of this area and avoiding those areas for the highlight, especially if you don't have a white pencil or a light base or anything down there. Just really gently using circular motion with the ivory be careful not to go too close to the pupil and drag any of that darker color into the lighter color if that does happen it's difficult to get rid of it and it can muddy your lighter colors so just be really careful so i've done it a tiny tiny little bit there sorry if my head was in the way for that i'm just going to go around that pupil first and get that in going to go over a second time in a slightly different direction to the first layer still using the circular motion my circles always tend to be like really open not really circles more like ovals well it can it can change between being large ovals and small circles but as long as you're using like a semi circular motion to add that down, it's just going to help to smooth out the tooth of the paper. So that's our base. We're going to use some of the ivory to do some blending uh, when we get to the darker colours. So make sure you keep this by your side. We're then going to use some of the dark Naples ochre to add in some of the lighter yellow tones. So I'm going to give that a sharpen as well. Stuck. I need to empty it, it's really full. Well, you don't have an office assistant. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Dark Naples Ochre in exactly the same way as we did with the Ivory using a really light pressure. Again, we don't want to go in with too hard a pressure because we want to build some really nice light yellow areas. So 
So I'm just going to fill in the right hand side here and then hopefully you'll be able to see a slight difference in the tone of adding the yellow down. Can you see this very, very slight difference? This is a lot more yellow. This is obviously ivory or cream. So I'm just going to continue doing that over the entire area. And Stephanie. Once we've got this layer down, I'm going to go into some of the darker areas that I can identify in the reference photo. So on the top edge here, and just slightly increase the pressure so we can get a darker concentration of that yellow down. So if you're following this along with me now or on a replay or whenever you may be watching this, please make sure you share your works in progress or anything or your final pieces with me. Make sure you tag me on Instagram or if you want to and you're on Facebook, you can join the free Facebook group. The link is in the description. I think it's near the top. Or maybe, um, Amy, you could paste the link. If you are on Instagram, make sure you tag me in the post or use the hashtag AmyHowardArt and I'll repost some to my stories as and when they come in. So there's a slightly darker area directly underneath the pupil. He's got like this, I don't know what shape it is, like a, I don't know, a V? I don't know. <laughs> He's got this really dark weird V U shape underneath his pupil so I'm just darkening that up there uh, post the link to the Facebook group the free one please just going over the darker areas so hopefully you can see some difference between the lighter areas that I've got in here and the darker areas that I've just mapped out. Thanks. So if you're on Facebook and you want to join the free Facebook group, you can post your works in progress and finished pieces in there. There's also good art discussions and all of that fun stuff going on there. But if you're not on Facebook, no worries. I'd say Twitter, but I'm not really active on Twitter. No worries. We're going to switch colour and we're going to bring in some green gold before we work on darkening some areas further with some of the Vista and the Walnut Brown and that kind of stuff and adding in some green as well. So using some green gold, you can see his eyes are really, really golden, nice orange tones in there. So I'm going to work into the darker areas with the green gold. So where we've added uh, a couple of layers of the dark Naples ochre. So 
sorry, I just had to pause the microphone there because I had a cough. You know when you breathe in and like you breathe in a hair <laughs> and you get a, t a tickle and you're like, no, I can suffer through it. I couldn't suffer through it. So you can see how dark these areas are getting now. We want to get them nice and dark. Starting to add in all of those nice golden tones. Oh wow, yeah, I can imagine. I hope they're okay. And let it all go smoothly. I'm sure it will, but... I'm going to blend some of these darker areas into the lighter area just by lifting the pressure off of the green gold pencil and working some of that over. to make one of these group things one day they are really helpful i do suggest it good for building a nice community but then so is a lot of other social media as well So working on darkening, we're going to use some raw umber and some beaster, we're going to combine the two. We're going to give them a quick sharpen because these might seem like quite sharp pencils but they're quite blunt in terms of getting a lot of pigment down and for getting a nice concentration of colour. So nice sharp points. So where we've worked some of the yellow into the iris now, you can see that the pupil looks a lot whiter. So we need to go in there and add some more blue to the pupil um, and the highlight. So we're going to use some raw umber first. I'm going to really get into these edges along the bottom because that's where we've got a lot of these darker tones. The iris of, a, of an eye seems tends to be a lot darker around the very edges. And then you get some lighter patches through the centre. That tends to be the general rule. It's not always the case, but you know, nine times out of ten, you do end up with a darker outer outer rim. So I'm still using that circular motion. I'm increasing the pressure on the pencil a little bit just to get a little bit more colour pay down. And we're going to lift the pressure off the pencil to blend it into these lighter areas. So you can take the pencil and turn it on its side as well to really lift the pressure so we get a nice smooth blend into those lighter areas. Yes, so where you hold the pencil depends on the pressure you want. So I tend to hold the pencil quite far to the tip like this if I want to exert quite a lot of pressure through the pencil. So if I need to get a really strong colour down, then I'll use the pencil really close to the tip. If I want a nice soft, uh, gentle or not very much colour added down, then I use the pencil more towards the back. That just limits the amount of pressure that you can actually put through the tip. I'll just show you on the back of here actually. 
me use a pencil that is darker as well. So we'll use this walnut brown because it's nice and dark and it can see better. So when you hold it quite close to the tip, you can exert quite a lot of pressure and you can get really strong amount of colour. It's nice and saturated. When you hold it more towards the back, this one's actually a bad one to use because it's only small, but if you hold it more towards the back and then you try and exert quite a lot of pressure, you only still get like a very pale colour in contrast to when we're holding it really close to the tip. So the, holding it like this, you can actually angle the pencil right down as well. It's very difficult to hold your pencil really far back and angle it down and get really nice consistent colour as well. I hope that kind of explains how you can use pressure to get some different colours and for using different techniques as well. So. I'll tend to hold the pencil more towards the back for shading and for those base layers and then move my, pen my hand closer to the tip as I want to get into the more detailed areas. What colour was I using? Oh yeah, raw amber. Okay. So working around that edge. So really increasing the pressure where we've got some really dark tones over on the left. And lifting the pressure off the pencil as we work into where the lighter colour is so really just lifting the pressure off so you can see that my paper texture is actually coming through really quite strongly on this piece so we're gonna go through and blend soon I'm gonna add a couple more layers down then I'll go through and blend Um, I get my Fabriano in the individual sheets because I find that using the sheets off the block it tends to be a little inconsistent in texture. It's not as nice, in my opinion. I don't know why, it should be the same, but I find that it's different. So I'm going to increase the strength in colour around the very edge of the pupil there it's going to help to blend it in same on the left hand side as well so we're going to switch to using some Bista which is slightly darker it's going to help to blend out some of these colours in these darker areas as well. It's a very similar colour to the raw umber but it just has slightly more brown notes than orange notes. Holding the pencil quite close to the tip as well. So we can exert a little bit more pressure. Just get a little bit more dark in a few areas. So those of you that are drawing along, how are you doing? Am I going too fast? It's going to the very bottom. 
really get that nice and dark in the bottom there. I'm also going to add in some terracotta to the bottom here because we've got an orange, orange fiery like area along the bottom here. So especially off to the left here. So I'm going to use that terracotta to just introduce a little bit of orange, a little bit of that fire. Saskia. Got this recommended. Hello and thank you. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thanks, Grace. So also adding in a little bit of the terracotta around the pupil. So hopefully you can see those tones developing. We might need to go back in with some more green gold and work into these lighter areas. I'm going to do that first actually. So just shading down. I'm working into the darker area as well because that's just going to help to smooth all of that out. And then leaving this very, very light section here. Thank you, Saskia. So now we start to get a little bit mental and adding in some green and also some cap and Morton violet. So these pencils are already nice and sharp, so no sharpening there. We're going to use the green first, purely because I like green over the cap and Morton. So I'm going to start in these darker areas. And just start darkening using a light pressure and using that same circular motion that we've been using for all of the other layers on the eye this is going to come out quite green in the lighter yellow areas but we're going to darken it down by adding in some of the walnut brown so we're just going over really gently so we're going to use a light pressure so that we can build the green tone and we don't go in with too much green. We're going to add the green around the iris. No, the pupil. That's what I meant, the pupil. And also coming into this darker area, this bit underneath the pupil too. Um, I do kind of do commissions, it depends on the subject. So if you want to discuss any commissions or anything, give me a message on Instagram with a picture of what you are interested in commissioning. So you can see the eye is kind of hitting a little bit of that kind of ugly stage where we just need to start to bring everything together. We're just kind of adding in all of the colours and everything, getting all of that down. But it will start to look 
a lot better once we start really darkening up the edges here. Debating about making another waffle. The answer is always yes to another waffle. Um, if someone draws exactly the same via tutorial, can you call yourself? Yes, of course. Because it, you're not going to draw it exactly the same as me. You're going to input some of your your passion or whatever into it. It's going to turn out different. So, definitely. <laughs> okay, we're going to start to add in some details and some of the darker areas with the walnut brown. We might even go in with a little bit of the dark indigo. We'll see how it goes. But mainly going to add in the darker areas, really darken them up with the walnut brown. Walnut brown is my favourite pencil, by the way. I know nobody asks, but just letting you know. So we're going to start at the top because we've got a lot of shadow going in at the top. Just using a light pressure to begin with. Don't need to go mad and add in loads of pressure. Just slowly build it up using that circular motion. See where we're going over that green, it's creating a really nice dark tone. Just making sure we really come into those very, very edge areas where we added that initial dark sepia down. I'm blending a little bit of the walnut brown into that. Uh, do I ever use pan pastels? I'm working on that actually. I have a polar bear that I have outlined that I need to need to do that with. Please remember to answer. But yes, thanks for the reminder. I thought that was a uh, a reminder for me to answer questions like what didn't I answer to the top area first now at this stage if you're wanting to blend go ahead and do that I was going to blend but I don't feel like I need to just yet but at this stage it will be a good time to go in if you're using a solvent and add some blender down that way. Blend all your colours together before you start adding in a load of darker colours because that's going to kind of muddy up some of your areas. So if you do want to go in and blend and you want to get it looking nice and smooth and all of that jazz then you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you're a big fan of pan pastels, so much fun. They are nice. I like looking at them. Do you ever do non-realistic style pictures? Yeah, I've done a couple of eye studies. They're kind of realistic in the fact that it looks like an eye, but I've used different use different um, colours as to what would be realistic. Actually, I am going to go in and blend a little bit. I'm going to use the ivory. Ordinarily, I'd use the white, but I don't want to take it like right back. And I'm just using a circular motion and just using a little tiny bit of pressure. Because with the polychromos pencils, when you're doing a little bit of blending, they do require a little bit of pressure, especially if you're blending with a polychromos pencil over the top of polychromos pencils. I'm just 
gonna go ahead and blend the whole thing. <laughs> Why not? There we go. Oh, it's looking a lot smoother. Okay, so going back to our walnut brown. Just continuing to darken. Ooh, hello. Coming into that very bottom edge and just making sure that I've got a little bit of walnut brown around the edge so it kind of really blends in. It's going to help it look really nice and spherical because you'll have this darker outer and then this lighter middle and then a darker upper as well. Uh, yes, polychromos are my favourite. I don't tend to use anything else. I mean, I do like the Holbein pencils, but they're not practical for tutorials because they're very expensive. And a lot of people struggle to get hold of them, especially in the US, open stock. Good evening. Ah, oh, it's good afternoon here. But good evening where you are. I'm really taking my time with this one. Usually I'd work a lot faster, but I'm just going quite slow for the, obviously the sake of the tutorial. I just enjoy and taking my time on this one. So I'm going to start to add in some of the details that are coming up from this bottom area, and I'm just working in the direction that they're going. Just using a lighter pressure to begin with. to introduce a little bit of a dark indigo and using it on its side just to kind of glaze some of that colour over it's going to help to darken this top area it's also going to tie in whoops, with some of the highlights in the eye in the pupil it's going to add in some of the darker colours as well So this little highlight here, I'm going to go in with some light ultramarine. Ooh, there's that dog next door. It's going to continue to bark, so I apologise if you can hear barking. It's coming into this sort of V at the bottom of the pupil with the walnut brown, just using small circles and working really lightly I'm going to blend this bit out a little bit and we're going to add some terracotta over here as well to get those nice orange tones in Do you live by the sea? Yes, we do. I'm just working in some of the darker details and everything that I can see in the eyes now. I'm going to grab that vista and start to darken and... Actually, actually going to use a raw umber. I'm going to add a little bit more of raw umber tones into this left hand side so really getting that nice sort of orangey yellow saturation up of the eye 
Lovely. How many dark sepia pencils do you go through each year? Um, not that many actually. I haven't actually put in a coloured pencil order, like for a restock of Polychromos, for about a year. I actually don't go through that many pencils. I think the mo the one that I go through most is probably Walnut Brown. Simon's laughing over there and I don't know why. Because you always mention Walnut Brown. I love Walnut Brown. You should get some merch printed with Walnut Brown on it, mate. I just wish there was a Walnut Brown. I'd be pretty happy if I was reincarnated as like a Walnut Brown pencil. So I'm really trying to keep this lighter section here. Apparently we also live uh, next to place people that like to have very loud exhausts on their automobiles. Oh, I sound really old when I say automobiles. I just aged myself by about 100. To help to exaggerate the lightness of this, I'm actually going to go in with some of the white and just help to blend it out a little bit and then I'm going to add some of the ochre back over the top. So you again using the side of the pencil. You have goals but unfortunately not close to the city. Oh man. You also laughed when you said walnut brown. I don't know why. Um, why Walnut Brown? Um, I don't know. It's just, I don't know why. I just have this fascination with Walnut Brown. I don't know why it's my favourite. This is among your selection there. Yes, of course it is. Exactly. I always choose Walnut Brown, apart from when I don't. Just going in with the Walnut Brown. Shut up, Simon. We're trying to be professional here. And working in some small details, just again from the bottom of the eye. So, just starting off really lightly at first, and then going in with a little bit of a harder pressure to really get those details in. I am from the UK. I said dollars. When did I say dollars? Oh, probably because I was talking about Patreon or something, um, and that's in dollars. Just using some green gold to just come in here and accentuate some of these colours, help to blend that walnut brown and everything in. I'm going to use some of the Capit Morton Violet because this has got some slight red tones to it, which is perfect for this lower area here. Walnut brown is professional. Yes. <laughs> walnut brown and broccoli. Yeah, well I've got the broccoli tattoo. I just need to uh, get a walnut brown pencil now. Or maybe I just get like the um, the end of the pencil but with walnut brown and then the numbers. Just going into the edges with the Capit Morton Violet to get a Savoy cabbage. I don't really like cabbage. Not as much as broccoli. Going into this dark area underneath the pupil as well. So you can really see how it's darkening up just by layering in a ton of different colours. 
I'm actually going to use some of the dark sepia as well to help darken up the top of the eye. Gonna bring that down and blend it through as well around the pupil. Just get a short pencil. <laughs> Cabbage is amazing. It's nice, but I like I wouldn't class it in my top vegetables. Um or pencil sharpener do I recommend? Always the oh, what's it called? Swordfish up Swordfish icon. icon. That's the one that I like. But also the Derwent Super Point as well. I'm going to use the Walnut Brown just to add in some details coming from the top here. So if you take a, cl uh, a close look at the reference photo, you'll notice that he has like these kind of lines and dots that kind of follow the spherical shape of the eye. So we're just kind of trying to work in some of those so we can get that sphere look. So we're kind of working around that way so adding in some darker details we're just using a light pressure you don't want to go in too heavy handed just use something just add in really really light amounts of pressure and you can see it just builds up this really nice texture just following the curvature coming around the eye and then we can darken up individual areas as well by going in with a little bit of a harder pressure you'll notice that in this bit of the eye it's slightly blue so we're going to add in some dark indigo just really lightly shade some of that down and we can lighten up certain areas and add a little bit of a reflection with some white but we're going to do that more towards the end just adding in a little bit of blue there so that when we add that white down hopefully it will lighten up that blue and make it look really nice and shiny we can also add blue on top of the walnut brown through some of these little detail areas here and the blue is a nice color to add because we've got those blues coming through the pupil as well I'm just going to crisp up the edge of the pupil there actually. Ow. Um, I can't stand cucumbers. Oh, what's wrong with cucumbers? Yeah, see, you like broccoli too, you know where it's at. <laughs> Tautless. Oh, you're tautless. Switching back to the walnut brown. Just continuing to add in some details. On the left hand side. So really getting in there with adding in these very small details. I apologise if my hand gets in the way. But all we're doing is just adding in lines, sometimes little dots as well, it depends on what the texture is at what point. Just using some B-Stir just to accentuate some of the colours around the very bottom edge here and also just to run some texture through this lighter section with the beast. So we don't want to go into this very very light section with the walnut brown because it's going to be too dark. So just using a slightly darker colour, just ever so slightly, this is going to help to bring that texture and it's not going to look too overpowering. So really just starting to go in here and really darken this up as well. I might introduce a little bit of the dark sepia on this bit. Now this highlight needs to be shaded down a little so I'm going to use some of the B-Star to come into this highlight on the right. So it's very very faint that bit. So it kind of looks like it's a surface, like very, very surface highlight. I'm 
just going to work on some of the orange tones as well on the left. Maybe adding in a little bit more green as well in a few places, just on the left hand side. So we're mainly going to be working on the left hand side. The right hand side I'm pretty happy with. If anything we can go back in with some green gold or some raw umber and hype up the saturation of some of these colours. I'm just going to use some raw umber there. Hi Roseanne! Maybe just around the pupil, just hype up that saturation on the right hand side there. Yeah, on the on the left, we're just gonna continue to add in some details. So just helping to blend in the pupil. We're coming around there with some of the walnut brown so before we finish with the iris we will need to go into the pupil and just really darken that up some more Adding in all of that texture along the bottom. Very, very faint little lines. And then if you need to, you can go in and blend with the lighter tone pencils or a white pencil so I'm just using some of my ivory just to go in and blend a little bit just using a little bit of the dark indigo to come into those areas of detail that I've added in really pick them out using some of the green just on the bottom dark section here so I'm gonna go in with a white pencil and come into this darker area here where we've added some of the blue and as you can see hopefully you can see it it's just coming out very very lighter blue it's just gonna make it look like again like this area here like it's a little surface highlight coming in I'm also going to use the white pencil just to blend a few areas and pick out a few lighter bits as well here and there. So any areas where I feel like I may have gone a little bit too dark or anything like that, I'm just going to come in and lift them with the white pencil. So if you wanted to you could add in some dark orange tones or maybe some red tones or something like that to the bottom area here just to really bring out some of those fiery tones. I'm just going to go in with some more terracotta. I'm using quite hard pressure to really get those orange tones coming out. And we're going to use some of the dark sepia around the pupil really crisp that up get it nice and dark and I'm going to use the dark indigo to shade that down so it's a little less white a little bit more blue and then using the dark indigo just to shade 
around the edges of the eye at the top here as well. And I think we're pretty much there on the iris. Don't really have very much else to add to that. Except for maybe some green gold, just a bit more of those yellow tones. I'm just gonna have to be one minute, guys. My kids' play school is ringing me. Okay. I was panic when they ring that something's gonna be up, but it's fine. <laughs> um, okay. What do we wanna add next? What's the time? It's half past three. Okay, cool. So, what we can do is we can start to strengthen the uh, area of the eyelids, the lower lid in particular. So we won't get to do any fur today, but as I said, Whatever we don't do today, I'm going to continue to film the rest of the eye and then I'll post it next Friday on the channel so you can finish it off. So we're going to use some dark sepia. I'm just going to go around the very outer edge of the eye and really darken it up again. Oh, this is moved. Just coming around the bottom edge. There we go. Uh, we're gonna maybe just add in this blue section here. So on this section, we're actually gonna use the warm grey one as a base because it's got some cooler tones. Don't need like that really warm tone like in the ivory. So I'm just going to shade back and forth, maybe a slight circular motion as well. And I'm actually going to work outside of the graphite area as well so we can get a nice spread of colour. Around the outside it's pretty dark anyway so it doesn't matter too much. So All of that down there, it's a nice smooth layer. And then we're just going to work in some light ultramarine, so straight away with the blue. Nice blue tones. Hi Amy, how did they get on? I'm going to go over again with the warm grey one. Help to smooth and blend that out. Increasing the pressure a little bit. Sharp that swordfish icon. We're going to use some of the dark indigo as well, so some of those darker blue tones. And then we're just going to shade and get darker using the dark sepia so you'll notice on the reference we've got a whole area of darker color surrounding so i'm actually just going to outline this blue section with the dark sepia like that and just work ever so slightly into that outer section as well so we get a little bit of a border of that darker color
maybe just going over with some more of the light ultramarine building in a bit of dark sepia I'm actually gonna use some of the caput mortem vi uh, violet just the caput mortem to increase the shadows here so right next to the eye it's a little bit darker so I'm going in there with the caput mortem you can see it's kind of creating like a, a weird purple tone because the caput mortem does have some red in it so mixing that red and blue obviously makes purple so it's going to make it a nice kind of earthy toned purple you can see it's getting darker already and then working some of that caput mortem into the dark sepia that I've added around the outside and just bringing that ever so slightly into the area of the lighter blue and we can blend this down again by going in with some warm grey one blend everything together resaturate that blue with the light ultramarine continue to add in a little bit more shadow with the caput mortem as well there you go maybe a little bit of the dark indigo on top of that as well just to help to add to increase that shadow aspect through there and then using some dark sepia to just thicken up this line around the outer edge there we go so we're going to add a base of the warm grey one into the entire lower eyelid just shading following the curvature of the eye and going right to the edge where I've added the graphite in so you just want to use a light pressure for this going to use some of the caput mortem to shade that down right into the eye corner down here because it's slightly more sort of red in tone and the same with up here as well so in the eye corners shading in some caput mortem just adding a little bit of this around the top of there as well so if you can see anywhere that has a kind of reddish tone or sort of undertone to it just add in some caput mortem but these are kind of the main places where you want to add it do you burnish when you draw white fur not really no I kind of like to leave the, the texture of the paper when I do white fur So let's have another sort of water break there. <laughs> so as I don't really have any other darker greys to add into this, we're just gonna build some tones up with the dark sepia here. So I'm just going in, working over the entire area going over these areas where I've added the caput mortem as well so 
So just lightly adding in the area of the lower eyelid. This is where it begins to look quite ugly when you're adding in dark colours like this and they're not really blended out. I don't like this stage. It's nice when you work past the stage. Well, we'll be adding some dark indigo and everything on top with the walnut brown as well, like we did for the people and all of that fun stuff. So you can see how rough it looks at the moment. So we need to work past that stage and build up some tones. So I'm going in with the dark indigo. Pretty much just going over the whole thing. I'm working in a slightly different way, uh, shading in a slightly different direction than the initial layer of that dark sepia. That's just so we can get maximum coverage and we can fill as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. And then we're going to use the walnut brown over the top to build that nice dark tone. Just increasing the pressure on the walnut brown as well. So we can reintroduce some of the Caput Mortem as well on top, increase some of those red tones that we can see going through this eye as well. And as we've added this darker outer, we can see that we need to go in here and darken up this little blue section. So I'm using quite hard pressure on the Caput Mortem. Going in with some more dark sepia on top, really darken it up. Just ever so slightly shading into the iris with the dark sepia as well. going to shade in some of the dark indigo onto this blue section just a little bit it's just going to help to darken it up blend it in a little bit more and I'm also going to use do I use a white pencil to just blend it yeah why not So you bring in some more of that caput mortem, blending it with that dark indigo on this area here to create a really nice dark purple tone. And then just increasing the pressure on the dark sepia around the very edge or edges of the eye. 
just ever so slightly blending some dark sepia into the iris as well. So there's a little bit of a highlight coming from this little blue section. So I'm going to use my white pencil as best as I can. I apologise apologize if my hand gets in the way here, but right next to the eye here, there's like a little bit or a little gap where we've got a little bit of that dark tone coming in and then a lighter section, which is like the water line. So just added in some white pencil over the top and then coming in with the dark sepia either side to just kind of make it look like a really nice thin strip and I'm going to use some of the what's this the light ultramarine over the top as well so if you want to get a really nice crisp white area there you can use a white gel pen as well I'm going to use a little bit of mine actually because I haven't used this in forever so I'm just going to clean the tip off by running it on some scrap paper I'm just going to add in some glistening details with the white gel pen I'm also going to add a little bit of a white bit to highlight in the eye there Increase the little bits of highlight through here as well. So, using the white pencil and then going around those little white areas with some of the darker tones just to really help it pop out a little bit more. Wish I was here from the beginning. Um, well, you can watch on the replay, it'll be available. So if I wanted to get this really, really dark, what I could do is go in with a black pencil. I'm going to wait to see how this looks when I've added in a little bit of the fur, because it might, the fur might really darken it up, because it's really white surrounding it. It might even lighten it. From this dark lid, I'm going to just bring in a few lines of Bista so that we can start to set up to bring in our fur. So from here I'm just going to use a nice sharp pencil and I'm going to bring in some fur lines from there and it's just going to help to blend that darker section in. I'm also going to do the same with some walnut brown as well. It just helps to set up to blend everything in. I'm just going to do the same with some walnut brown. Um, I just used a white gel pen just to add in these little bits and just a very, very tiny bit here. But this highlight was just with a white pencil. I could use my white pencil, but this um, Holbein Soft White is very difficult to get a really, really sharp point. Because you have to sharpen it with a knife knife because it's really, really soft. I'm just going to make sure that the outer eyelid is a nice solid line by using some of the Walnut Brown. I'm just bringing in a few dark walnut brown fur lines through there. So these little highlighted areas I'm actually going to tone down 
with a little bit of darkened decay. Just so they're not quite as pronounced. Okay, much better. Okay. So, that's where we're going to stop for today. Because we've almost been two hours now. That's been a long time just doing this, this small piece for me, anyway. So, those that have been following along, I wonder how you've got along. Make sure that you do add to um, Instagram and all of those things. I hope this hasn't been too fast for you. I've really taken my time with this one. <laughs> So I hope you've been able to follow along. I'm just going to put all my pencils back in in this bit here. And I'm going to finish this eye over the weekend so that there's a, a tutorial for next Friday for you guys where we'll be finishing this off. Won't be alive though. If anybody has any questions or anything they want to ask now I'm just going to stick around for another five minutes maybe. I'm just going to switch my view back and move my microphone. <laughs> there we go. You need to sit over there. Um, I don't upload too many real-time tutorials because that's where I put, that's what Patreon and my website is for, for all the real-time stuff. come out a lot more red than pink. It's what you get for adding in red to pink. Like these, the yeah. this bit is really pink, like at the back, but then the front is more orange and red. <laughs> um, wondering where I can find this video you made about how you choose your colour. Oh, um, let's see if I can find that link real quick. have a video on YouTube. It's in the the tips and techniques thing section. Let me see if I can find a link for you anyway. I like it when you stop to answer a question it gives you a chance to, ha to catch up. I have really tried to go a lot slower with this one. <laughs> um, where's the tips and techniques? Where are you? Techniques. Here's a colour picking video. Um, if any man should draw the iris, didn't do the shadows dark enough. Cool. Well, you can watch it back and then work on your shadows. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can you draw a shark? I've drawn a shark before. I do have some more sea life, ocean life, fish. I've got stuff that lives in the ocean coming up, so yeah, hopefully that will please those people. What will the next real time tutorial be? On Patreon, I have marine life, that's it. Um, I have a elephant eye study to do and I still got a koala. I was meant to do the koala at the beginning of, of February but I just haven't felt like it so I haven't done it yet. I know that's naughty. Um, so yeah that will be next. I'm, I'm not sure what I've got planned for March. I'll have to look at my calendar again. But that's the eye so far. I need to cover it on my desk because otherwise the cat, either of them, any of them, will jump up and probably make it muddy and then I will 
Ya la tengo. Thanks, Stephanie. Didn't help that your cat was tapping your arm wanted to be fed. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> I love it when the cats want your attention, but when you're trying to do something, it's just like, yeah, okay. Later. Suki usually hops up. Well, if you watch my vlog on Wednesday, I was trying to like tap, like answer some YouTube comments and do some admin stuff, and she was like, no, you will tickle me. Thank you. I'm glad you found it easy to follow along with. And thank you. Um, does Suki go outside? No. <laughs> we put her outside when it snowed and she was just kind of stood there and then just ran back inside. She was just like, nope, not having any of it. She goes outside, she went outside in the summer when I was gardening and stuff. She would just sit out there with me, but she won't stay out for any kind of prolonged period. Thanks, Claire. I do use Prismacolor. I've actually got a commission that I'm using a few um, Prismacolors on. Purely because the colours in the Prismacolor are perfect for it. But anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed today's draw along. Ow, I've got a massive knot. Um, can you put somewhere a real... Yeah, I will take a photo. Here's this knot where I've got in my hair. I'll take um, a picture and then I'll post it on my Instagram account. The link to my Instagram is in the description if you don't follow me already in there. Oh my god. What's going on? Why is this matted? Um, so yeah, I'll post a picture over there so you can see the details. The colours don't come out too well, aren't coming out too well on this. I think I've got it set a little bit dark. Um, but yeah, I'll post on on there and probably in my group as well. I've just run your table with objects so your cat don't jump up. <laughs> That's a good idea. Cat traps. Um, she would have been cute in the snow. I, I'm kind of, She's a very, very cute cat. We do have like a very expensive looking cat around here. I don't see it that often anymore, but when we first moved here it used to sit at the door and I did kind of invite it in the house, you know, just to make friends. You can go down well with Jaffa. <laughs> no, Jaffa did not like it. Um, yeah, I would be afraid that she would, she'd get stolen. But she doesn't want to go out anyway, so. Um, yeah, so next Friday will be the continuation of this. It won't be live, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure whether it's going to be in real time or whether I'm going to do like a slightly sped up version because it's just all fur. And I've done covered fur quite a lot on the channel before. So if you want to finish it beforehand, you've got the reference photo. Whisper has white fur, he's got kind of fawn coloured fur, and he's also got like uh, flecked kind of tabby fur. So there are some tutorials on my YouTube channel in the fur section playlist of all of the different types of fur that he has so you can combine them and then finish off your drawing if you can't wait until next Friday. Otherwise it's going to be a project that's going to continue over till next week for you. So maybe if you have drawn along live you're not liking how your eye is looking and you want to try it again to get like a really super ace version then you've got plenty of time to redraw your eye and follow along at your own pace and then you can do the fur next week um still trying watercolor uh yes i actually did a watercolor the other day yesterday um your neighbors have a main coon she doesn't go out yeah oh can you imagine my mum has um her cat sausage if you follow instagram and you watch my stories you've probably seen sausage there but he is a persian cross ragdoll he is like the biggest fluffiest cloud ever and she's not letting him out because he will he will get picked up <laughs> any other color pencils you use well i have um caran d'ache luminance and I've also got some Derwent Lightfast as well. I do like those two brands too. I've also got some Caran d'Ache Pablos. 
But the main ones I use are Polychromos. I do like the whole binds. Puffball. Yeah, he is a proper puffball. But if we have no other questions or anything today, then I'm going to call it a day here and I'll tune in with you guys next week. If you are part of Club Puffin on the website or you've managed to bag yourself a Club Puffin slot on Patreon, I think, I think there may be one left or maybe they've all gone. Um, next week we will be live, we'll be drawing a dog nose. So exactly the same thing as what I've done today. We have a little discussion, we do do a drawing in real time. So if you want to do more draw along sessions, because I'm not sure when I'm going to be doing them on YouTube, they are every month over on Club Puffin on my website and Patreon. The links are in the description if you want to join over there. There's what? Three. There's three spaces on Patreon for Club Puffin if you prefer Patreon. But we'll be doing a dog nose. I'm super excited about that because it's been forever since I've worked on a dog. Um, who the heck can give a thumbs down? Oh, someone gave it a thumbs down before we even went live, so I don't know. Maybe they were just mad that they couldn't tune in at the time that it was scheduled. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because it's still interaction, so I don't know. What? Funny. <laughs> um, have I ever met up with other art YouTubers? No. Oh, yes. Yes. With um, the Art Hive, Sarah. She's one of my recommended channels in my channel thing, if you go below. And also, um, oh my god, I've forgotten. Who is the other person? I feel really bad. For what? Sorry, I, I can't remember the channel name. Hold on. Oh, Katie Vaughan. Katie Vaughan art. Had a complete brain fart then. Uh, we went to Summer in the City in 2019. Yeah. 2019, we went to Summer in the City um, and I met up with them two there. Super lovely people. I apologise, Katie, for forgetting your name. <laughs> um, Sarah does watercolour, Katie does like um, a variety of different like mixed media um, and variety of different videos and stuff. Your Jaffa. Oh you have a Jaffa too. Gold fibers. I like gold fibers, yes. They're very similar to the whole binds and very similar to Prisma colours. There's a video that I've got done on my channel if you want to check out my review of them. You have a cat named Whisper too. Oh, look, so many name things going on. Who has a cat called Suki? Um, almost at 30k. I know. How many are we off now? I could have checked on my YouTube channel and was there. Simon will probably check. Oh, no, because well, you I can't see it. Thumbnail. Oh, he can't see it. I've got 29.9. 29. 29.9. I'll just look on my phone. Yesterday. Um, wondering, using different brands of pencils for drawing, may it cause some sorts of funny problems? Um, a lot of people don't like to mix different coloured pencils, especially if they are like a harder based pencil like the Polychromos with the waxier based pencils like a Prismacolor or a Holbein because of the way that they react. Like, when you put down a softer pencil it's very difficult to go in with a an oil based pencil like the polychromos with a harder point and get really super sharp details so you it can be difficult but it can be done you can blend them together and they do work really nicely together but a lot of people find it difficult to layer up using different types of color pencil or different like soft and harder types of color pencil uh, personally I like to use a mix because I like the fact that you can blend and get some really nice kind of subtle blended colours and everything with the softer pencils and then you can add the darker pencil um, the darker details with a harder pencil like a polychromos over the top. I like that. It does take some getting used to though. It's like when you work in just an oil based pencil and then you switch to using a softer pencil, you're like, oh my god, this goes down so easy. 
it's a little bit of a an adjustment period that you need to get used to. Is there a brand with really bright shades? Holbein has some really bright shades, like really bright shades and some pastels and some really nice neons as well. I think it would be really cool for some of the UK art YouTubers to meet up at some point and talk about pencils and cats. Oh my god, that would be cool. I'd love that. <laughs> when we can all go outside and meet up with people. Um, your first professional colour pencils were the Caran d'Ache, which I regret badly. Yeah, a lot of people don't really like the Caran d'Ache. I, I feel like I'm a little bit of a, oh I love all of the pencils, but I do love all of the pencils. So I never understand when people don't really like the pencils. I'm like, how can you not like the pencils, man? Uh, sometimes I like mixing, usually stick to polys. Yeah, polys are my go-to for everything because they're the best. They have walnut brown. Um, but then, yeah, I do like to mix. Like if I'm working on a personal piece, I tend to mix in some pencils that I don't get to use that often, like the Holbein's. Or I really do quite like the Derwent Light Fast pencils. They have really, they're really starting to like appeal to me. Although again, they're another expensive pencil. It gets stuck in your ways. It's the problem with getting old, Amy. Hi, Peter. No, not Peter. Well, that's the name of your channel, but hi. <laughs> um, Arteza. <laughs> oh yeah, I was checking um, what the YouTube thing was. You bought some pack of Pablo's, which have, yeah, Pablo's have some bright shades as well. <laughs> Very dim. Sorry. I mean, we're all getting on here. I mean, I'm 30 now. This one over here is 32. Hey. Age is just a number. Um, yeah, right. 29928. So only a few to go until 30k. I don't know. I didn't know whether Hit to. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the what button? Subscribe. Oh. If you're not already. Oh, yeah, of course. Subscribe <laughs> if you're not already. Such a YouTuber. <laughs> Um, I don't know whether to do like a giveaway or something at 30k or whether to leave it to like a large number like 50 what do you guys think should we do some kind of giveaway or something special to mark the occasion because it's gonna happen probably by Sunday the way the numbers are going so you're 43 in June yuck that's not bad at least it's not 143 can you imagine being 143 <laughs> um, a live stream, a giveaway, finish the swan. Oh, no, <laughs> I don't want to finish the swan. The more people pressure me to finish something, the more I'm not going to do it. I'm stubborn like that. Um, thank you, Stephanie. Um, thank you. <laughs> you make me feel really weird when you give compliments and it kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do, um, whether to do some kind of giveaway because I need to check my Jackson's account to see if we've got any affiliate money that we can purchase a set of pencils with or something. So I might do some kind of giveaway, but I don't know how to structure it. So any ideas that you want to throw at me, feel free. Um... If you have any ideas of what we could do to celebrate, then message me on Instagram because it's the best way to get hold of me. Facebook Messenger for my page is just shocking. Or email. You can email. Uh, 30k is a large number. I mean, it's not if you compare it to some other pe other like numbers. <laughs> I'd love to do a whole blind giveaway, but oh my gosh. That would be expensive. I'd have to have a look at Jackson's to see what the affiliate balance is. If you want to contribute to the giveaway, 
You can use my affiliate links in the description because then I will earn a commission which we can put towards a giveaway. I didn't know whether to give away some original art or something because I've got um, a couple of eye studies and some other things that I could give away in the way of like actual art. I thought, no, realistic, Amy. I don't even have a Ferrari or a BMW myself. <laughs> if anything, it would be a Tesla that I'd give away. A Walnut Brown giveaway. Just all the Walnut Brown pencils. You ordered some, not had a chance to try them out. Oh, you would love them because they are a decent pencil. Um, mega Facebook group. Wow, mega. <laughs> anyway, it's now four o'clock. We've been live for two, for two hours now. I have to go and pick up my child. I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> Not for an hour, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> oh no, no, they rang and they said um, no one's going to be there. No, what? His friends are all going home before, so he's going to be there on his own. It'll be alright. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking, but Siobhan was like, if you yeah, want to pick yeah, him up, you can. I was like, well, that means that you want to go home early. <laughs> 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 um, thank you for the subscribe. Um, coming from Jackson isn't except yeah. Obviously, if you live outside the UK, it's not very feasible to order from Jackson's. Um, but if you do live in the UK and you want to help purchase anything from there to help with like a future giveaway, every little helps. Anyway, um, I'm going to see you guys next Friday for a live stream if you're part of Patreon or Club Puffin on the $14 tier. If not, then you guys will have to wait until Friday to see the video. If you like enjoy my studio vlogs, by the way, David now moved to my second channel, which if you search YouTube for more Amy, it will come up. That's where I'm going to be posting the vlogs because I'm just trying out something with the algorithm and the reach and stuff for the videos. So, yeah. Anyway, I will catch you guys soon. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I hope you enjoy working on your cat eye studies and we'll finish it next week. Thanks for stopping by.